which was wrong. The material was wrong. So we need to figure out how this student who has gone through uh, 12 years of education plus could not understand the English used in a North American textbook or has significant problems. Now, imagine that person in the industry trying to understand requirements, complex requirements, bug reports that are written in this language, having video phone conferences with clients and customers where you actually have to deal with this. So language issue is something that we have to address at a very fundamental level. These issues that we are talking about cannot be addressed at the university level. It's already too late. Analytical ability, looking at career path choices, so students come into going into this, uh, making the uh, high school up to HSC, the uh, education system, a bit more uniform, so there's no hard line between science, arts, and commerce. There's no such thing in the world, but we still have it. Why? Nobody understands. Um, IBA graduates, I think most of the students in IBA, which is business administration, are science graduates. So, uh, you know, there's always a disconnect somewhere. We need to address that as well. Um, Education financing is a big issue. Uh, a student who's excited about computer science or IT and suddenly can't get into a government university, what does that student do? Can't afford the six lakh, five lakh taka to graduate in a private university. There has to be some kind of a financing and that issue of who's gonna guarantee and all that is a, uh, a significant issue that we need to worry about this. Now, uh, some of the recommendations that come up from the um, keynote speakers, um, increasing capacity. Uh, my point to that would be yes, of course, but let's not just say increase double the size of seats. That doesn't solve the problem. It, we need to look at capacity of the teaching, capacity of the instruction, flexibility of the education system, the curriculum, extremely important, looking at uh, importing the capacity side. And then homegrown, you know, sort of homegrown capacity can come later, which will supplement this. But we need to figure out where we stand today, which is really, really far behind uh, some of the countries that I had mentioned, uh, including Vietnam, which is moving at a far faster pace than we've seen. Um, the one that I cannot overstress the importance of is institutes that bridge the gap between, uh, for low-skill jobs, there are many, many such jobs, um, HSC plus graduates who can go into institutes and do that. For a bit more higher-end jobs, univer between university and a professional life, that institute has to be there. And that model must be developed and sooner than later. The longer we wait, uh, the longer we're falling behind. A student out of the university is not employment ready. We must make that student employment ready by means which, again, small companies can't afford that. So we must come up with an institute. And these institutes must provide at least a reasonable range of certifications that give employer the guarantee that the student coming in or uh, some confidence is good enough. And the student also starts seeing that, yes, if I go into this area, I will get out, go through this program, get a job which will have a career path. And the companies will grow, profits will come, and hopefully there will actually be an industry instead of staying at the same rate over the last 10, 20 years. So thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Professor Mitran. Uh, we'll come to our next panelist. Uh, Professor Kazi Farooq Ahmed, who is the treasurer of Bangladesh National University, and now listen to his comments and uh, if he has anything to add to our First of all, I must thank the organizers of this seminar uh, and also for inviting me, though I am neither uh, an IT specialist nor a software developer, but I am very much interested in the expansion of uh, computer science or IT sector in Bangladesh. Uh, I think Mashur uh, for control it that uh, I had the opportunity <coughs> to introduce uh, computer science for the first time in Bangladesh in any affiliated college and a national university. Well, I had to cross many hurdles. Uh, I also was charged why uh, the students of Islamic history 
general history, political science, should uh, take IT courses. I did make it compulsory in Sheikh Burhanuddin Postgraduate College. I had to face many problems, I was charged, and uh, anyway, and uh, the, one of the charges was that it was misuse of money. Why uh, the subject uh, not uh, included in the curriculum of National University or the uh, Board of Education should we just uh, teach uh, these subjects? Anyway, uh, I think uh, much progress uh, has been made in this uh, line still. Uh, I must tell the pace of progress is not at all up to the mark because uh, the mindset uh, at the university level, uh, I would not mention about other public universities but about ourselves because self-criticism is, uh, I think, uh, should be made fast. Now the thing is this, uh, you know, I am not only the treasurer, I am the honorary treasurer of National University, but uh, I am basically class teacher and I used to teach for uh, more than uh, 30 years in political science, which has whatsoever no link with computer science or IT. Uh, but uh, I, as a teacher organizer, you know, I belong to Teachers Association as well. We have, uh, nowadays we don't uh, just uh, send any postal letters for uh, organizing meetings and other things. We do just take the uh, utility of uh, email. Now uh, our teachers organization, National Front of Teachers and Employees, we have just opened a website so that uh, our teachers across the country can download our messages and information from there. Now to come to the point of National University, which controls not only uh, the latest figure is not 1,500 colleges, it's about 2,000 colleges now under its umbrella. And uh, I'm very much sorry to tell it that uh, uh, we couldn't do much uh, headway in uh, IT sector still. Uh, we have three websites at the moment and uh, we have a project uh, of introducing ICT courses in only 10 postgraduate colleges in the country. Only 10 post and uh, all are in the government sector. N uh, not a single in the non-government colleges. Still then, uh, you know, National University having about 2,000 colleges under its umbrella, we have more than a million students. We have more than a million students in these uh, colleges. Now anyway, uh, the point is here, the question of mindset. You know, uh, first of all, the name of this subject was uh, in honors, computer science. And uh, the same syllabus, more or less, with slight changes here and there. All the students approached me that uh, if we could change the name of this subject to computer science and engineering, say, see, it would benefit them, it would help them. I'm sorry, we couldn't do it. And why we couldn't do it? Because the crisis of mindset is there. And uh, regarding National University, we have much of potentials, prospects, uh, but the problems are also manifold. Anyway, uh, as for myself, I have initiated a proposal to train uh, the officers, uh, just numbering uh, 18 in National University, first of all, to train them in basic computer literacy so that they could just go forward in their programs. You have mentioned about science enrollment. I am very sorry to tell it. These science students or science graduates are also uh, not uh, uh, students of pure sciences like physics and chemistry. These science subjects also cover psychology, geography and other subjects too. So these are not pure sciences again. Uh, 
regarding uh, these things, I think it has already been mentioned uh, that uh, the question of language is speed, especially English. Well, uh, I think uh, I could just give a piece of good news that uh, uh, we are thinking to introduce a communicative, uh, to enhance communicative skill in English. We are thinking in terms of introducing spoken English in the curriculum of our secondary uh, level. So, uh, you know, uh, the students who just have English as their compulsory subject, they don't have much of ability to deliver, to just uh, communicate fluently in English, uh, which is very much important, uh, especially for computer ICT sector. Uh, well, uh, about uh, education policy. Uh, well, I was one of the uh, uh, formulators of education policy, and again, I am also a member of the implementation committee as well. Now, uh, you know, there are uh, uh, teachers like Zafar Iqbal uh, and uh, others who are very much conversant with the software, our computer, our technology, and this expansion. Uh, I think related to this education policy, without going into uh, dragging ourselves into any controversy, that uh, we are more, uh, uh, we are in favor of creating more uh, congenial uh, space for the science expansion or computer. So uh, I think uh, there the scope and in this education policy, we have kept a provision of uh, uh, just developing data, information, information and education. You know, under the education ministry, there is only Bain base, which provides us the information or data about education, how much of students do pass, what are the rate of uh, dropout, other things. We have kept a provision this time that in the non-government sector also a data bank on education can be established. There is, this time is in the education policy we have included. Uh, I will not take much time. I will uh, uh, say one thing that uh, our syllabus and curricula in the IT sector, in the formal education, uh, in our institutions, it must be regularly updated because our students do complain, yes, sir. Well, uh, some new changes have taken place, but it's not in our syllabus. So, I think, uh, I think uh, the Black University professor has already mentioned of flexibility <coughs> in curricula or inclusion of new and newer things and new innovative ideas. I don't take much time. Uh, I will say that. Uh, whatever we do, it must be done in an attractive way, attractive manner. As regards the economic aspects and other things of software, I think uh, it should be dealt with the specialists. Definitely everything must have a financial aspect without which nothing can move uh, forward. Uh, my last word is this. Well, uh, uh, we have to know more. Uh, about this literacy and we have to spread this especially in the uh, colleges and we must remember this point that uh, those who are in IT, who are excelling in IT, not that all are science graduates. So these things also must be uh, taken into consideration and I must appreciate the younger generation. Uh, we are sorry, we simply can operate, we simply uh, operate uh, at the minimum level in computer science and other things, or uh, computers. But our, uh, not only sons, our grandsons and granddaughters are more adaptable, are more receptive. So I think uh, pinning our hopes and aspirations mostly on the next generation, I think we can move forward. Thanks you all. Thank you all.